Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today we're gonna take a look on heartwarming stories from tech support. So, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications bell, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. And by the way, don't forget about your 10,000 subscriber giveaway. And for that, you only need to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. So, let's get to it. The hug heard around the company. I was thrust a laptop by an angry executive early this morning with him complaining that his laptop had locked up again. Normally, we have a thickening system in place for any and all tech issues. However, when an executive wants something, he bypasses the system because of RHIP. So I go through the normal routine of diagnosis and through my efforts, I see that the issue is simply bad RAM. I replace the RAM and take the unit back to the executive. He tells me he refused to take the unit unless I had made 100% sure that everything that was wrong with it is fixed. Internally, I wanted to punch this man, but I held it in and simply asked him what other issues he was having and pulled out a notepad. He ran through a load of issues that all screamed just run freaking CC cleaner to me and I took his unit back to my desk. After going through and cleaning out BS installed programs, used literally once and never again, and cleaning out junk data, I found that a folder in his roaming was reading 12 gigabytes but was hidden. I log in with my credentials and enable viewing hidden or protected files and see that the hidden folder was from 2014. Basically, it was just a bunch of pictures and looked to be a temp folder created by one of the old programs I removed, some kind of picture manager or some such. Normally, when we see personal pictures on the machine, we're supposed to delete them immediately. Now, no one ever does this as we're not that big of dicks in the IT department. But this guy was an executive, so I decided to just move the pictures to his desktop under a folder I created called Old Pics. I took the laptop to him and informed him of the pics, telling him I left up to him if he wanted them deleted or not. He thanked me for my time and I went back to work. About an hour later, he and his wife, who had come up to join him for lunch, come over to my desk. He seemed very happy and she was crying. Now normally, when I have nothing to do and a boss comes over, I stand up to greet him. Just the way I was raised, I guess. I was not prepared for what followed and was totally shocked by the outcome. The lady wanted to thank me for finding the pictures and the executive reached out to shake my hand, thank me profusely before pulling me into a hug in front of the entire IT department. I awkwardly hugged him back and he let me go embarrassed. My eyes were wide, fiberglassed and totally unprepared for this extremely out of character moment from this guy. Barely able to hold back tears. His wife tells me that the pictures I recovered were thought to be lost. In 2012, their four-year-old son had died of leukemia and the pictures I recovered were taken right before his diagnosis at three years of age. Because of a house fire, a few years ago, they thought they lost every last photo of their son. Apparently, those were the photos I had recovered. His wife reached out to hug me and everyone in the IT department stared at their screens hard with puffy eyes as we're not all expecting this kind of emotional event today. My boss came out of his office to personally thank me and forward an email chain to me ahead of the company-wide email that the CEO had sent out basically retelling the tale while naming me personally. He threw in words about striving for excellence and the unexpected results of everyday excellence. I had to turn off my Skype for business, as the other boys kept coming in one after the other. My boss told me to take my lunch early, since the flood of message was making it too hard to do my job. Edit. Post this before lunch one day, don't log into Reddit for a bit, realize post went nuclear, rip inbox. Thanks for the gold, you nine kind Redditors. Hey guys, I'll tell you, that's a great story, and that just shows that Sometimes you do nice things and you don't even realize the impact they're gonna do to other people. Don't bother sending a tech, I'll be dead by then. So my story starts on what was a normal day taking calls on Frontline for a large cable company. 
The job pays well, and for the most part, the people I deal with are fairly nice to talk to. Quite often, we'll get calls from seniors, especially in the morning, who have premise equipment issues such as no on screen or no signal on their TV sets connected to our digital equipment. Now my heart does go out to some of those folk because up until recently, past few years, we would supply straight analog cable to many homes, coax direct from wall to TV with scrolling guide. However, most cities we service nowadays require our digital equipment to receive channels, and this has caused a lot of frustration with older people who don't know how to operate said equipment, always having your TV set on video or HDMI to get picture. So oftentimes, we get customers who are repeat offenders with long ticket histories of this type of issues. So anyway, I get a call from an older gentleman who is quite bitter and mean right off the bat. Doesn't like that I ask for his address, telephone number to verify the account, hates that he has to speak with a machine before reaching an agent, etc. I have some experience handling these types of customers, however, this call was going to be a little different. I spent over 45 minutes with this guy, we'll call him Mr. Smith, trying to get his TV set connected to the digital box properly so he could receive a picture. No luck. He was getting clearly frustrated by the whole ordeal and started blaming me for not being able to do my job properly, how I was useless, etc. Whatever. Like I said, I've dealt with this before, so I tried my best not to take it personally. But eventually, I had to ask him if we could book a service stack to the home, a courtesy call, to get his TV working correctly. Unfortunately, our booking calendar was showing an appointment three days out. That's when he dropped this on me. Don't bother send me a goddamn technician, because I'll be dead by then. I'm 94 and the TV is the only thing I have left. Are you really going to make me wait for attack? I instantly felt bad. I mean, I've heard every complaint the book to ask why people don't want to wait for attack, but this one kinda got to me. I'm in mid 20 so honestly, I can't even imagine how it must feel to utter those words. So I spoke with my supervisor, who said they'd see if we could get someone out earlier, but we couldn't promise anything. So I let Mr. Smith know, and he was predictably not very happy with my answer. At that point, it almost sounded like he started to cry, and went in how he had no family left, and no friends that come visit. This was after I asked if there was anyone in his building that might be able to help. Man, I felt terrible. So I took it upon myself to ask Mr. Smith if I could pay a visit. He lived in a small city over from where I was, not very far to drive. He was a little shocked I was willing to do this, but sounded thankful I was willing to come out and help him personally. So I head over, get to the resident and meet him. Within 30 seconds I had the cable run again, simple input change, and even brought in a simplified remote for his set-top box to avoid this problem in the future. That's when he started crying. He goes into how he hasn't actually spoken or really interact with anyone for years. He gave me a hug and told me how thankful he was that I came out and helped him, and told me how sorry he was for being so mean earlier. I said it was no problem and I was happy to help. And that was it. I left. Three weeks later, my supervisor came to my desk and asked if I could come to speak with her for a bit about an account for Mr. Smith. Turns out, he sent the cable company a letter outlining how thankful he was for helping him with his issue and how it really made an old man happy again for once in a very long time. The letter was framed and put on our front entrance to retail. I guess the moral of the story is no matter how nasty someone is to you over the phone, Sometimes you're not always a terrible person and just going through a lot. I still think about Mr. Smith occasionally when I get those nasty customers and it makes me feel a little better. Anyway, thanks for reading. Just thought I'd share this one call that changed my outlook in life. The best 75 year old user ever. It's been a bit since I've posted, so quick rundown. I work for a small software company doing IT and customer service work support the users of our order writing software. We brought on a new company six months or so ago, and along with it came a sales rep we'll call her Virginia. 
Virginia is 75 years old, not good with computers, but has the best sense of humor and understanding I've ever had from a client. Every time she calls, she's always got something to say, which usually ends in a, I hope you got your value nearby, and consider us all wizards. We recently updated our software and sent an email out notifying users of this. She calls in yesterday, and we shut it up while I explained to her that yes, this was a real email, not spam, and she should in fact update her program. She says, okay, I'm going to try to be a big girl and update this myself, but stay by the phone. A few minutes go by and the phone rings. Sure enough, it's her on the caller ID. So I pick it up without using the standard greeting and say, hey, Virginia. She responds, darn, how did you recognize me with my hat and fake mustache on? I lost it for a bit. Having a long week full of incompetent, ignorant, and intentionally destructive users was washed away because this little old lady told the most dead-like joke over the phone. Not all old users are bad, especially if they can laugh at themselves. And now for our last post of Tales from Tech Support. His final message goodbye. This is a story about the most emotional call I've ever taken. I work at an ISP as a Tire 2 representative for tech support. Essentially, one of the jobs I have is programming calling features. This call in particular happened about a month ago. A ticket had come to my queue about a customer having trouble accessing her voicemails. I dug deeper and found it was full as well. No problem. There were a few programming errors, which I fixed and called the customer who will be known as Sweet Elderly Woman. Hello? So, I'm calling because you reported an issue with your voicemail today? Oh yes, is it fixed? Yes, it should be. I found that your box is full. It has maximum amount of messages in it. Dear, I'd hate to be a bother. But could I get you to go in and delete them for me? We have a way of access the messages if the customer cannot, doesn't want to, etc. Absolutely, I'll gladly do that for you. And I'll call you back when I'm finished? Yes, please. She thanks me and I hang up to go to access the messages. Knowing fully well that this is going to take at least 15 minutes, I go and read Wikipedia articles as the messages are playing. I eventually read the last message and it catched my attention. I stop reading, listen to it, began tearing up, and saved it to her box. I composed myself before calling back. Hello? Hi, it's me again. I listened to all the maths and deleted them except for one. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Why did you leave one? Ma'am, I think you should listen to it. I'll hang up and give you some time, okay? Okay, dear. I gave her time to listen to the mess and called her back. She was crying when I called her back. It was then I learned the story. The message was from her husband who had passed away due to brain cancer three days after he left the message. It was him saying goodbye and that he loves her so much and he's never felt more alive all the years she spent with him. She was crying because he was deceased by the time she got to the hospital and had not heard his voice. She said I gave her part of herself back that she'd lost when he passed away. She thanked me and we disconnected the call. Edit. To answer some of the comments I'm seeing. No, I do not have to listen to them, but I explained crystal clear that the message will start playing and I will hear who they are from. This person had the same last name as her, which is why I listened to it and saved it. Added two. Wow, GOAT, thank you so much. So yeah, guys, that's it for today. Uh, I was really happy to come across some of those stacks, you know. Those posts were really heartwarming. Um, it shows that sometimes, you know, you, you work a little bit harder and may change someone's life. Um, to all of you, thank you very much for staying up to now with me, and I hope I see you Wednesday.
Thank you and have a great week.